what's going on guys welcome back to this video obviously today's video will be in the try hack me platform and as we have been covering in the last in the previous videos um, the learning paths so basically our learning path or the learning path we have been covering is red teaming so basically in red teaming in the last video we covered red team opsec which was a framework for um, protecting the integrity and maintaining the chances that your red team operation will be successful now today we will be talking about intro to c2 c2 is a command and control server so basically i bet guys you have heard this term so many times while doing ctf challenges even if you are a pen tester you must know the term command and control i'm not going to be doing this room all together my, the objective here is not to solve a room or to answer the questions. The objective here is, guys, to teach you the concepts and the foundations of every single one. So basically, for that reason, I'm going to cover the first three tasks, which are introductions or form an introduction to the a concept of command and control server. In the next video, we will be covering an example of setting up a framework, the basics, and how to uh, send commands and receive commands from and to the victims or the targets. Now, let's start. So basically, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to we're not, we're going, we're not going to read these. I'm going to skip to the explanations immediately, so we don't have to just you know sit down and read. So basically, first we define what is a command and control framework so basically all command and control frameworks offer the attacker so basically here the main player is the attacker the attacker is the most beneficial uh, entity of the command and control framework basically the attacker is the operator of the command and control framework or the c2 server i'm going to call it c2 from now on so basically the attacker controls the c2 server the C2 server offers the attacker a way of communicating with multiple victims. Victim 1, as you can see, victim 2 can be a laptop, workstation, server, anything. It can also be a router, a switch, or it can be a firewall if it has a vulnerability. So basically, the attacker um, owns or commands the C2 server and through the c2 server the attacker will be able to send and receive commands from the victims so now the command the concept of command and control framework is clear so it's a way for the attacker to control the victims that's for now now you might be asking me what's the difference between um the say for example uh, a netcat listener Okay, or a C2 server. So basically, here you have the attacker. So say the attacker is able to set up a netcat listener, and then uh, after setting up the netcat listener, the attacker executes some, you know, payload. It could be Trojan malware on the server, and then the malware or the server will communicate with the listener and establishing a reversal. So the difference here is that the operability of the session. So you want more flexible and scalable way. Of controlling more than one victim on uh, unfortunately netcat will make it difficult so basically that's why we use command and control server uh, for the scalability and flexibility of the operation I mean if you have multiple victims or multiple targets it means you have to open several ports through netcat and you have to open th several netcat tabs uh, it's not that manageable or it's not, it's not easy to manage all right, so now we know the concept of C2 server. Let's now define a couple terms. As you can see here, the term C2 server. So C2 server is the server that the attacker operates. For example, here, it is the server, and the same way command control server here. So it's the workstation or server or the part that the attacker controls. Here, the attacker uh, develops and creates payloads, creates agents. Uh, plans for um, you know executing uh, pen testing or executing some Trojan or malware against the victims so it's the attacker playground it's a C2 server and the C2 server is the place where it all boils down to so everything the communications from the victims the commands the post exploitation the pivoting all 
uh, come back to the C2 server. So it's where the attacker uh, plans, executes, and operates the victims. Now we define what's called the agents or the payloads. So basically, in the C2 server, guys, or the C2 server here, we create what is called the agent or the payload. An example would be an MSF Venom payload. Okay. Uh, it could be a partial script or a partial uh, payload created in the partial Empire C2 server. So it's the payload that you will deliver to the victims here. So let's take an example where it is more clear. Yeah, here it is. So we have the C2 server. Okay, as you can see, the payload here is payload.exe, it's an executable format, and it is delivered to the workstation. So it's called actually payload or agent. So the agent performs the callback to the server. So when you execute um, the payload on the victim machine, the payload will communicate now with the server, sending you all the information you want. It also receives the commands, for example, ls, um, cat, flag, whatever. All the commands that to execute against the victim are all done by the payload or the agent. So it's the most important piece here. Um, the listeners. So the listeners are the part on the C2 server, again, that receives the incoming connection from the victims. So once, this, once you execute the payloads on these victims, the payload will send the call back, yeah, to the C2 server, but the specific part that handles the, uh, these callbacks from the victims through the payload is the listener. So if you don't have listener, the agent here will not be able to um, communicate with the C2 server. Your C2 server will, will have a missing part, which is the listener, which means you will not be able to send the commands. So say you executed some payloads here on the victims through the agents, okay? Your listener say it wasn't working. So the victims here will have the payload trying to send the output of the commands you send, right, uh, to the C2 server. But the C2 server doesn't have the listener, which means you're not going to be able to send and receive the rest of the commands or complete the output. Beacons. Beacons are, let me call it, um, maybe the packets exchange between the agents on the victims and the listener on the server. Okay, here are some examples of obfuscating agent callbacks. So basically, um, antiviruses, you know, and security solutions, they all they are all on the lookout for detecting um, malware trojans and the C2 server that it communicates to. So one of the methods is implementing sleep timers, which means, let's go back to the same example here. Uh, yeah, could be this one. So this payload here is communicating with the C2 server through the listener, right? Now, a sleep timer means that the payload will send out the beacon to the, the C2 server every uh, couple, maybe five seconds, every 10 seconds, every 15 seconds. So it's going to perform sleep timer. It's not going to be communicating continuously. That's what's called sleep timer. Unfortunately, sleep timers are uh, sometimes identified by antiviruses. So that's what they implement jitter. Jitter are random delays implemented between the agent and the C2 server. So the agent won't communicate on a regular, won't exhibit a regular pattern of communicating with the C2 server. So it's not going to be every five seconds. It's going to be first at uh, five seconds and then it's going to sleep for maybe 15 seconds. Next time it's going to sleep uh, for like three seconds. So that way you make it hard for the antivirus and security solutions to establish a pattern and correlate or correspond the pattern or link the pattern to a specific C2 server. Now here, they talk about the payload types. So we have stageless payloads and we have staged payloads. So basically in stageless payloads, what happens, as you can see here, the C2 server creates and sends the payload or the agent all together. So the payload gets created at the C2 server, sent to the victim workstation and executed all together at the same time and it starts sending the beacons or the, it starts communicating with the C2 server through the listener. But stageless, staged payloads, what happens in staged payloads, the payloads are sent in parts. The first part is the dropper. So first in the C2 server, you created the payload or the agent. The C2 server will not send the the payload altogether. First, it will send the first part, the dropper. 
Now what happens here, the dropper, once it gets executed, the workstation, it's going to perform another callback, right? As you can see here, to the C2 server, asking the C2 server to deliver the rest of the payload, okay? So that the compromise will become full. That's how it, the staged payloads works. Staged payloads are much more reliable than staged payloads when it comes to antivirus evasion. Payload formats, payload can be executables, you know that, can be impartial scripts, can be HTML files, HTML executable files, very prominent and uh, famous uh, format when you want to execute a Microsoft Office document. Visual Basic scripts, JavaScript files, so on and so forth. Now, we talk about modules. So, so on and so forth, we knew that what's the definition of C2 server, what's the objective, who operates who operates the C2 server, what are the different parts that all play in the C2 server. Now, we want to understand what are uh, additional benefits of using C2 server. So, we have them in the modules. So, we have basically the post-exploitation modules and pivoting modules. Post-exploitation modules are modules that enable you to interact with the victim after you compromise it. For example, dumping the hashes, dumping credentials, um, performing uh, lateral movement or enumeration. Pivoting modules are as it states. It allows you to communicate with other parts of the network. We have covered these uh, previously, guys. One of the most prominent methods of, of pivoting is SSH tunneling. So basically, in the diagram here, you have compromised this victim. Okay. So basically, there are other parts in the network that are kind of hidden. So you cannot communicate with these parts. Why? Because they are isolated or they are maybe contained, compartmentalized in a different subnet. So since you have compromised this victim that exists entirely on a different subnet than these victims, you're not going to be able to compromise these victims as well because it's not going to work. Right? You compromise this victim and the subnet of that victim is different from the, vi the subnet of these victims. So the communication between you and these victims is kind of impossible. So what's ga what we're going to do, we're going to do some sort of pivoting. So we're going to pivot from this victim into these victims. Multiple methods exist to perform pivoting. Among them can be found in DC2 server and it is called SMB beaconing. SSH tunneling can also be used to create pivoting. Facing the world. So here, it is. Uh, these are some techniques that are used to make your C2 server public. So, so far, so forth. If you are conducting a pen testing in a local network, you're not gonna need to, um, you know, use these methods. But if you are, if you, if part of your pen testing or part of your red team agenda or plan is to conduct the attack external to the target network, you're gonna have to set up a domain. And perform domain fronting. Domain fronting is actually linking the domain name that you will be using for the attack through a proxy. Here it's Cloudflare. So you're gonna have the domain, link the domain with the Cloudflare, and then all the attack will appear coming from Cloudflare. It will be the proxy between you and the C2 on the proxy between the C2 server and the compromised device. So it will establish maybe some sort of privacy for you. Same with C2 profiles is another technique for proxying your communication with the victims. Questions. What's the term of the software on a compromised computer that communicates back with the command control? It's the agent. What's the beaconing option that introduces random delay? It's the jitter. What's the term for the first portion of the staged payload? It's the dropper. Uh, what's the name of the communication method that can potentially allow access to a restricted network segment that communicates via port? 139 and 445 it's smb beacon we cover this now here in the task study we lay down some examples of c2 servers now you may as i told you guys you may not have heard the term of the term c2 server server but maybe in, pra in, in practice you may have worked on some c2 server without knowing theoretically that they are c2 servers and they can be used for that purpose First, it is Metasploit. So Metasploit isn't only an exploit development tool, it's also a C2 server. It can be used as a C2 server, as you know, guys, to create payloads, deliver the payloads to the victim, and receive the connection. Also, I have Armitage. Armitage is the GUI interface of maybe 
let me say Metasploit, it has more flexible features. It, uh, exploits can be created automatically and delivered to uh, victims. Victims, as you can see, guys, can be viewed visually. It's a very popular tool. PowerShell Empire has been discontinued, but it is still uh, usable in the wild. Uh, it relies heavily on PowerShell. Covenant is used for pivoting, mainly for lateral movement or pivoting. And explain what is pivoting. We have Silver. It's more advanced than the rest of the or the previous ones uh, because it allows more methods of you know obfuscating the communication between you and the uh, victim allowing you to tunnel or maybe channel the communication through different protocols also encrypting using let's encrypt um, now these ones are free but now we have cobalt strike cobalt strike is very prominent c2 server but it is paid one and here we have brute rattle it provides or it uh, gives you the experience of uh, attacker or adversary uh, experience by you know the interface itself and other two other c2 frameworks can be found in this site as you can see on the left we can see the c2 framework you can explore them on your own leisure the installation the uh, how to you know install it on your machine of course these are, these are the open source ones okay guys so here no questions now in the next video stay tuned in the next video we're going to cover uh, Armitage and installation setup and how to work on Armitage hopefully in upcoming videos as well we're going to cover uh, we actually have covered Metasploit maybe we will cover these as well PowerShell Empire Covenant all of these so that was it i also guys have many notes on red team uh, they are all contained in a one note file that actually lays down notes about cybersecurity careers management operational among them i covered red team tactics so if i write red team here as you can see i defined first some terms rules of engagement how to perform the targeting the methodology this is not a technical guide it is only theory it gives you notes theory notes on how to take steps during maybe your career management operational blue team red team so on and so forth uh yeah so that was it guys i hope you like that and definitely i'm gonna see you later